and a blessed good morning to you and you and you also god bless you what a blessed message we received today and a glorious ministry too from brother from pastor atwell i trust that you enjoyed and as we continue you <laughs> i've been blown in here god by god's grace and i truly truly thank him and so we're going to continue with victory and praise because that's what we do, we gave praise, so we get the victory. But here is our dear sister Jasmine to pray for us, the prayer of thanksgiving. Just giving God thanks for all that he has done, all that he's doing, and all that he's about to do. So let's give God thanks. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just want to give you thanks. I just want to give you praise. I just want to adore you. I just want to magnify your name. Lord, I want to thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for your mercy that is brand new every morning. Thank you, God, for your compassion that faileth not. Thank you, God, for hearing and answering my prayers. Thank you, God, for deliverance. Thank you for delivering me out of the lion's den. Thank you, God, for delivering me out of the fiery furnace. Thank you, God, for delivering me from the prison of bondage. Thank you, God, for deliverance from everything that held me hostage. Thank you, God, for deliverance, oh God, from that which held me captive against my will. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me, oh God, and delivering my marriage from every satanic assignment, wicked counsel, traps, witchcraft, caging, misery, confusion, resentment, divorce, separation from every evil words, Lord God, that has ever spoken against me, my husband, my marriage, my family. Lord, I just want to say thank you, God, for health and strength. Thank you, God, for the roof over my head. Thank you, God, for food on my table. Thank you for clothes on my back. Lord, I want to thank you for more than enough. Thank you, God, that I may extend it to others. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you, God, for the ministries you have entrusted me with. Thank you, God, for saving my children. Thank you, God, for saving my loved ones. Thank you, God, for removing hard, hardness of heart, oh God. Thank you for removing stubbornness, disobedience, ungratefulness, selfishness, unwillingness, judgmental spirit. Thank you, God, for removing the spirit of unforgiveness. Thank you, God, for delivering me from the valley of the shadow of death. Thank you, God, for drawing me out of many deep waters. Thank you, God, for delivering me from my strong enemies. Thank you, God, for your power that allows me to run through troops and leap over walls. Thank you, God, for teaching my hands to war, that bows of steel will be broken by my own arm. Thank you, God, for giving me hind feet that whatever I step on will be destroyed forever. Thank you, God, for girding my loins with power, anointing, and strength. Thank you, God, oh God, that I was able to pursue my enemy and overtake them. Thank you, Lord, for delivering my enemies into my hands. Thank you, God, for giving me a choice to beat them small as dust and scatter them out in the street or to pray for their soul to be saved. Thank you, Lord, for sending your arrows to frustrate those that gather against me to seek my death and destruction. Oh God, and to see my downfall. Thank you, Lord, for lifting me high above them. Oh God, that's trying to wound me and capture my spirit. Father God, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for lighting my candle in this world of darkness. Thank you, God, for recompensing me, oh God, with good because of the pureness of my heart. Oh God, the righteousness of my heart the cleanness of my hand oh god and because i have shown mercy to others thank you for peace of mind thank you god for enlarging my border widening my territory and extending my step thank you lord god that i may not slip thank you for the mobility of my limbs thank you lord that you will allow people whom i don't know to serve me thank you god oh god that my enemy will submit themselves to me thank you god i just want to thank you lord for every woman every man oh god of true living almighty god of this creation of heaven and earth 
Lord God, that you have placed me on their hearts to pray for me, intercede for me, fast for me, stand in the gap for me, hold me up, oh God, and strengthen me, especially my mother, God. Extraordinary strength for her in Jesus' name. Lord, whatever I fail to thank you for, Lord God, Lord, by name, Lord, you know. Lord, I pray that you will not fail, oh God, to know that I appreciate you and I'm thankful and I am grateful. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name for everything that you have done, about to do, and still doing in my life. Lord, I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. And we say amen and amen also. And we give God praise and we truly are thankful for all that he's done for us and all that he's doing in us and through us. As we remember our own our brother Nelson Mandela today, as he has gone on to his rewards, whatever they are, we trust God that he is in his care and in his presence right now. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And indeed, here is a man who did a good work and we trust that he did this work in the name of Jesus. We can lift up man, but no matter what they've done, how great or how small, it is of no effect if Jesus Christ is not in it. So let's just praise God and thank him for this precious life that he has allowed us to embrace. He rides in my one son, oh. My one I walk a my one I walk a He rides in my one son, oh. My one I walk a my one I walk a
We thank God for this day. We thank God for all his blessings. And as we thank him, we give him praise. The 100 Psalm says, And into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. And so now, right now, is the time to praise and give thanks and to lift up our Lord and to honor him, for he is so worthy. There is none other. I will not be afraid, I will not be tired of saying that there is none other, for there is none other. There is no, not one. In Christ Jesus we stand, we live, we move, we cry, we joy, we sing, and we lift up his holy name. As I listened to all the accolades and praises and manner of greetings and, and goodness, that man would give to the life of Nelson Mandela. Not one give thanks unto God for what he has done, for giving him the strength, the courage, the will to do what he has done and to live in the way that he has. A man of humility, of greatness and love. And so I give God thanks for his life. I give God thanks for the example that he set. And I pray that we will Take that in and honor God. Let our lives be an honor unto God. Let our lives, let whatever we do, be a praise in thankfulness unto our God. And when someone has done something that's good, know that they can do nothing good except God be with them and lead them and guide them. And let that be your prayer today that God will lead you, lead me, lead us all into his will and his righteous way. All right, now is the time.
about Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now Blessed, blessed, uh, precious, precious greeting. Come, come. That's a greeting. Hi. Come, come. Let us worship the Lord. This is 92.9 FM Choice Radio, and you're listening to Victory and Praise with Miss S. And I'm happy to be here with you just to praise and lift up our God, to thank Him, to love on Him, to share Him with you, knowing that you know Him. Oh, I trust that you know him fully, that there is no other, that he is all in all. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the beginning of your day when you opened your eyes and you all oh, just embrace the presence of your God who kept you throughout this night and brought you to this beautiful beginning of this day. Let us just praise him, worship him, thank him, Know that he's right there, right next to you. Whether you're eating, drinking, sitting, sleeping, waking up, know that Jesus is right there. The Holy Spirit, your comforter, is with you. He will bless you today. He will love on you today. Oh, and after this day is done, you will awake to a new brand day, giving God the glory and the praise. For that's who God is. He's a God of faithfulness and new every day. And he wants us to witness for him. He wants us to speak well of him. He wants us to tell everyone, share him, share him, for he is to be shared.
pressure comes on, you know that you are in the arms of a strong and mighty God, the almighty God. So it matters not what the pressures are. You stand firm and let God use you. As we read in Genesis 39, we're going to just, I'm just going to read this as a tribute to the life of Nelson Mandela. And it begins, now Joseph had been down, had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had within the house and in the field. Joseph was in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though he spoke to Joseph day after day, and though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. And one day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and she and ran out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, 
he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. And the Lord indeed will keep you in your prison state and will bring you out in the due and right time, as he did with Nelson Mandela. Why? Because he had a work for him prepared to do. Trust in the Lord. Trust and hold on tenaciously to our God, the God who loves you and who is with you always, just as he is with all his children, all his children. And you are his child. So trust in him.
Lord, nothing compares at all. <laughs> nothing compares to the promise. Nothing compares to the love. Nothing compares. We also know of the life of Paul and the fact that he went to prison also. And in prison, he loved God. He lifted up God's name. He preached. He wrote. He taught. He lived for God, even in prison. So while we are in our prisons, wherever we are, whatever prisons they are, know that God is right there with you. And that in due time, he will bring you out. Know that he will. Examine the life of Nelson Mandela and recognize the fact that what God has for you, no man, no one can put it asunder. No one can stop it. No one can make it go away until it is done to the very end. To the very end when you can say that you fought the good fight. I fought the good fight, says Paul. And in prison, he lifted up the name of Jesus. Oh, we want to be able to do that in our prisons. Lift up the name of Jesus always, always. Our prison might be in our homes. If, if we are teachers, might be in the schools that we work in. Or if we are in the jail, it might be right there. Our prison will be where we can lift up the name of Jesus. Please, lift up Jesus' name. Know and let the world know that he is the one that's taking you. For you can do absolutely nothing in yourself. It is in God who has created you. So give him the glory. Give him the praise. Always. And so we're here to praise God, lift him up, love on him and encourage you as we continue in him. For we know not the hour, we know not the day, we know not the time. But we know that Jesus is coming back again. And when he comes, he wants to meet us faithful. Be faithful.
Oh yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah, he is the one. He is the one, hallelujah. Praise him. Oh, praise him. And here's his words in John 15, which I love. I love this chapter. Oh, Jesus says, I am the vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. My command is this. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I've chosen you and appointed you to go and bear fruits, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my commandment. Love each other. Oh, my dear Jesus, that's his word. Are you obeying his command? Are you loving one another? Are you loving each other? Oh, if you are not, if you're finding it hard, please go back to the words of Jesus. Jesus loves you. He says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. It is all about the love of God. It is the love of God that keeps us, that allows us to love each other and love in purity and in truth. Please try to love when you find yourself hating and being dismayed and depressed and can't, I can't stand her. I can't stand him. I don't know why and don't. Just think on Jesus. Think on Jesus, how he loves us. He loves us everlastingly, unconditionally, and that's his command. His command is to love one another. Oh, please try. No matter how difficult it is, please try. It is with him and on him and through him that we can love the way we ought to. Yes, he can say, he said, we can do nothing and he didn't mean that you can't do nothing because you're doing things. But you can do nothing good, nothing good, nothing good can you do without him. 
Oh, trust him so that you do the good things. I just want to thank uh, my dear sister Antonio as she reminds me of the Christmas season that we are in. And we thank God for the love that he sent Jesus Christ, his son, into the world to save us and to be our redeemer. For that he is. That he is.
When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the a storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a If you hold on to our God's unchanging hand, you cannot ever walk alone. And we will not walk alone. We'll just continue to praise our God. Lift him up, big him up, love him, and encourage each other. Oh, with the love of God, with the love of God. As we love, he loves. He loves us. And so we know how to love. So we'll continue to love and praise our God. Just let's praise the Lord.
search for an answer is met with a darker day. So don't let me go in our love Turn your head up to the sky Nothing down below me Face the truth to realize All that we could be Torn apart by rage and fear Hold on to Nothing down And that's the key not to let go. Know that he is ever with you and always will be with you. So don't let go. Don't let go. It matters not what anyone says. You hold on to Jesus. He is everything to you. Everything. Such freedom I have found you You're the healer Who makes all things new Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not going back I'm moving ahead Here to declare to you My past is over You things are made new Surrender my life to Christ I'm moving, moving forward oh, oh, oh. You've risen With all power in your hands You have given me A second chance Hallelujah Ooh. 
Thank God. Thank God that we don't have to go back. We don't have to turn back. We don't have to look back. For he is ahead of us. He's with us. Oh, just trust in the Lord. I just want to read this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where he says, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Praise the Lord, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Oh, what a precious word. We know that this tent that we're in will put off this mortalness and put on immortality. In the meantime, while we are in this tent or in this body where we can rejoice and praise our God, come, come, let us adore him.
is worthy and in this season of rejoicing in Christ knowing that he was born even though we don't know the exact date we know that he was born and he lived on earth and was glorified by the father and so we can praise him and sing our our joyous joyous praises unto him oh you're here to just encourage each other and lift up the Lord and glory in him and oh have great communion fellowship loving each other I love you and I thank God for you for I know that there is no greater thing there is no no greater thing to do than to praise our God and to bless his holy name and to share him and to tell each other of him and if you know of someone who is going astray to lead him back into the right way. There is no one who has not heard of Jesus. Many want to say that he's not God and that he's not our savior. Well, that's what we ought to be doing, telling them, encouraging them, persuading them even to come. Jesus loves you and he wants to live his life in you. And that when you leave this earth, you will be with him forever. That's the story. That's it. In a nutshell, that's it. Jesus loves you. Boys and girls, men and women, old and young, rich and poor, Jesus loves us. He loves us with an everlasting love. And you know what? He's calling us. He is calling us to live our lives in him. Let us trust him and live for him by rejoicing in him. What can I do? What should I do? Live in him. Be kind. Be truthful. Be joyous. Tell someone. Oh, be a good person in Christ. That's it. When you do good, do good because he is doing good in you. Oh, that's the joy of living for the Lord. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery. How you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing and hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love 
that makes me sing Your love is surprising I can feel it rising All the joy that's growing Deep inside of me And every time I see you All your goodness shines through And I can feel this God song Rising up in me Hallelujah 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 Your love makes me sing it Hallelujah 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 Your love makes me sing Your love is amazing Steady and unchanging Your love is a mountain Firm beneath my feet Your love is a mystery How you gently lift me When I am surrounded Your love carries me Hallelujah 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 Your love makes me sing And hallelujah 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 Your love makes me sing Yes, you make me sing Lord, you make me sing, sing, sing How you make me sing Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Your love makes me sing And hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, your love makes me sing and hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing and hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing and hallelujah. Oh, his love makes us sing. Are you singing when the joy of the Lord just rise up in you? Does it make you sing? Does it make you want to sing? Does it make you want to dance? Does it make you want to laugh? Does it make you want to be joyous? Oh, for all of those things are God's ways, gift of love in you. Oh, singing hallelujah, highest praises unto him. Does his love make you want to sing? Sing unto the Lord. Sing a new song. Sing a rich song. Sing a joyous song. Sing a song of praise unto him. Oh, this is victory in praise coming to you on Choice Radio. I hope you've made a choice. The only choice that is the choice to make for Jesus. I trust you've made the choice for him. Oh, for he is worthy, so worthy, so worthy, oh, to be praised. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made where we rejoice and we are glad in him. I am glad in him and I trust that you are too. God is amazingly wonderful. We just thank him. Oh, my boys and girls, if you're out there, when we come back after this song, we're going to get into the New Testament we are going to get into the New Testament, for we haven't. Even though we have finished the Old Testament, we are now in the New Testament, beginning with Matthew. So come on, let's find out what's going on in the New Testament right after this song.
Oh, yes. And it's all because of him. All because of him, you're alive and you're well. And so here it is. We're in this oh beautiful season. And it is so fitting that we would begin the New Testament. Oh, reading in this season of our Lord's coming into the world. Oh, what a joyous, joyous time it is when we understand that this was just not an ordinary birth, not an ordinary life, not an ordinary story, but a story that was so rich, a story that will fill all of our lives for good or for bad, depending on the choice that we make. Oh, you know, it's like today when we just see the motorcades and you know, the, the people marching, the bands, the crowds, all just standing around, just dancing and, and waving flags and carrying on. And, oh, and someone's shouting, oh, he's coming, he's coming. Oh, the king is coming. Or someone of, him, of real high esteem, oh, he's out there. The motorcade is going back and forth. And you are just so excited, you can hardly hold your breath. Oh, and the person drives past. Whether he be king, president, rock star, actress, actor, whoever, and you got a glimpse of this person. Oh, and you'll just go off and you clap and you joy and you dance and you carry on. Oh, and that's exactly how the Jewish people in the time of this New Testament message must have been feeling or wanting to feel when their Messiah would come. The Messiah, the one who was prophesied, the one who was told about in the Old Testament, would come, the Jewish people felt, in this pomp and circumstance, in this way of adoration and joyous frenzy, up and down the streets. But this is not what happened at all. This is not what happened at all. And so the word was written so that we will get to know and understand how did Jesus come into the world, who he is, why he is, what he did, and so on. And so in the New Testament that we are going to read, we're going to find out all about this wondrous, glorious, majestic, human God-man that came into the world. And as we look at it historically, we know that 400 years had gone by, 400 years of silence from God. And that is no one, no one between Malachi and Matthew wrote to the people warning them or even being messengers of God to them. Well, we ask ourselves, was God asleep during these centuries? 400 years. Was God asleep? Well, life was going on. People were doing their thing. I mean, there was so much practice of evil and wickedness and goodness too. God was not asleep. In fact, as the Gospels state and attest, he was actively preparing himself a lamb to be among men and then to die for mankind. God was actively preparing himself a lamb to be among men and then to die for mankind. The Old Testament foretold all of this. See, God in his mercy and his joy, he knew of the excitement of his coming into this world, what it was going to do and to whom it was going to be a benefit to. And so he simply couldn't hold it. He could, it, it couldn't be a total secret. He had to tell. And so he had prophets. He had messengers. He had people foretelling from Genesis all the way down to Malachi. 
he was telling of his coming. Ah, the reason for the Old Testament, actually, from Genesis to Malachi, is part of the Christian Bible. Why is it part of the Christian Bible? It is because the Old Testament states clearly as a sort of introduction to what would be the ultimate plan of God's redemption for man. Remember, God made a beautiful world and put man in a gracious, loving, wonderful garden to till it and to live. God, however, knew about man, what man would do, how he would be disobedient to him. Remember, we think of the creation, God's merciful, glorious, majestic doings, creating a world where human beings and his goodness can be shown. And then man was in the world and man disobeyed God. He went ahead and did what God said not to do. That's being disobedient. And as we go through the Old Testament, which we've already done, but we'll flow through again, we know of the flood and we know of Noah being a man of grace, a man whom God could trust. He came along and God allowed him to make the ark. And so when the flood came, everyone perished except Noah and his family. And then, of course, we went on until God called a man named Abraham. Abraham was a man God chose and he had grace and God allowed him to come through and bring forth the Jewish people. And out of the Jewish people came the Messiah. But before that, God just established the prophets. He established the law. He established the things that he wanted man to follow, knowing that man would not, could not. But God made a, a, a sort of promise, a sort of covenant. You know, if you, do, if, you, if you do this, then I'm going to continue to do my part of goodness to you. And so the Israelites, they tried and they worked hard and they did. They, they did the best they could. They set up the laws. And so out of this system, man continued to rebel. Man continued to rebel until we came to the end of Malachi, where God said, you know, he would send someone, and he did. And then came the New Testament. All those years, and then came the New Testament. And so we have, in our very first gospel of Matthew, we have the story of the Savior, how he came into the world as the Messiah, as the anointed one, as the one that came to save, to bring God's people out of their rebelliousness. He came in a very humble way. And so the New Testament consists of the four Gospels. They are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They speak of the life of Jesus among men. They speak of his crucifixion and his resurrection and his ascension back to heaven. You're going to find all of this in the New Testament or the Gospels. Then you, then you come to the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles are the writings of the early followers of Christ. And that is called the church or the called out ones. The primary Godhead figure in the Acts is the Holy Ghost. He is the comforter. He is the one that Jesus sent into the world to be the next comforter as he was unto the people. But at this time, Remember, we were still dealing with the Jewish people. But right in 
the book of Acts, and along those lines, Jesus handpicked, he actually handpicked his choice to take the gospel of grace to the Gentiles. And this man whom he handpicked was called Saul, whose name was changed to Paul. And what did Paul do? Paul took on the story of Jesus because Jesus imputed himself unto him and allowed him through the Holy Spirit to speak his word to the Gentiles. And so Paul was the one to take the gospel to the Gentiles, the gospel of grace, the gospel that God not, that not only loves the Jew, but the whole world, as Jesus said. For God so loved the world, the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son. And so here Paul is telling everyone he could. He wrote letters to the churches in Corinth, the churches in Rome, the churches in Ephesus, and so on down the line until we get to Hebrews. And he continued. Then, of course, in the, in the Gospels, we've got the books of the prophets, the, the, the disciples, really, who came out like Peter and James and John and wrote to the church, to this whole new body of Christ, letting them know what they ought to do, how they ought to be, believe, who and why they must believe. And it went on and on until finally John the Apostle wrote the book of Revelation, which is revealing the final days and the end of this system that we live in. Why? Because Jesus Christ will be coming back for his church. When Jesus Christ comes back for his church, this whole world will become brand new. Brand new. For Jesus Christ will reign with the saints, all who accepted Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that's the essence of the Gospels. That's the essence of the New Testament. It is the covenant of God written in this, these books. And so the very first one, is called Matthew. Matthew was one of Jesus' disciples. He followed God. Jesus called him and he followed Jesus. He was a tax collector, someone that the Jews hated. But Jesus never hates us. He hates the actions, or perhaps the things that we would do that are on displeasing to him. But Jesus loves us, no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter where we are, Jesus loves you. He may not like what you're doing if it's not pleasing unto him, but he loves you. And if you call on his name, if you believe and trust in his name, and he comes in to live with you, in you, you will have no fear. You will go along as Matthew did and write about him, for that's what Matthew did. Matthew wrote about Jesus, but Matthew primarily wrote to the Jews at the time, for his gospel talks about the Messiah who he is and what he is and how the prophets talked about him and how you find him in the Old Testament. And so as we read the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, we will find that Matthew begins by giving us the genealogy or who Jesus' family was. And he traced Jesus' family all the way down or even all the way back to Abraham. And he started, oh, it is such a beautiful story. We can just begin by reading the very first chapter. It talks of Jesus' beginnings, who he was. Oh, and of course, Jesus is a lot more than just the genealogies that are being stated here. But these are the words that were given by the Holy Spirit 
to Matthew to write about the, a record of who Jesus Christ is. And it says, a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Of course, we remember reading about David in the Old Testament. David has a whole book just for him. He wrote all the, most of the Psalms, and he's talked about in Samuel, in Samuel's prophecy or writings. We read that before. So we continue with this rendition by Matthew. He says he was the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez, and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. All of these names that I am reading to you that Matthew is stating, we have gone over and we can go through each of them and remember who they were. Like for instance, he says Salmon was the father of Boaz. But now you know who Boaz was, right? Boaz was the husband of Ruth, remember? And Ruth was a Moabite. Ruth was married to Naomi's son. And when things were very, very poor in the land of Moab, Naomi came back to Bethlehem or to Jerusalem and met Boaz. So you see, the genealogy of Jesus goes on and on. And all of the people that are stated are people that we've read before in the Old Testament. So you see, the Old Testament is giving life to this whole new concept or understanding of who Jesus is. And it says, Salmon, Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Do you remember Rahab? Remember Rahab. She put the thread out, the red thread out the window, so that when the spies, oh, I, oh it's such a beautiful story. It just goes on and on, and it's so exciting. Rahab was the prostitute. She was a woman of the world. She was not a Christian. She was not a Jewish woman. She was out there doing her thing. But she did something good for the spies that went into Jericho. Remember? Oh, how exciting is this all? When we remember these things. See, these, these are written so that we can think back and remember. And Boaz was the father of Obed whose mother was Ruth. <laughs> Remember we just talked about Boaz marrying Ruth, who was the Moabite, who was the daughter-in-law of Naomi, who came back to Bethlehem? Well, she got married to Boaz, and Boaz had a son with her, and his name was Obed. And guess what? Oh, this is so cool. Obed was the father of Jesse. Who is Jesse? Oh, come on. Jesse was the father of King David. Do you see how it all comes together? Do you see how it's all coming together? Oh, Jesse is the father of David. Oh, so wow. So Jesus, well, let's read on some more. David was the father of Solomon. Who was Solomon? The wisest man that ever lived. Solomon was his son. And his mother was the wife of Uriah. You remember her? That's right, Bathsheba. Oh, my, my. It just goes on and on. So excited. Listen, the word of God is so excited. If you read it and you try to just, just get into it, just get into the understanding of it, you will be so excited. Oh, I get so excited when I read God's word and I see how it connects and how it moves from one to the next and how it involves so many different people all the people of the world God came Jesus God in Jesus Christ came into the world 
to save the world from the sin of disobedience, of rebellion. And he had to do it through all of these people. Oh, he came down, down the line. Let's just finish this up. Let's see if we can finish this up. And it says that Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. You remember Rehoboam, the father of Abijah? Abijah, the father of Asa. These are all people that we've read before. They were kings. Some did good, some did bad, some were horrible. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. You remember Jehoshaphat? He went out to war and he realized that the, 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 the enemies that were fighting against him was more than him. And so what did he do? He prayed. He prayed and God said to him, stand still. This battle is not yours. It is mine. Do you remember me reading that? Of course you do. And so Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. And Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. And Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Remember Hezekiah? Oh, he had a big boil on his leg. He was sick. Oh my. And he prayed because the prophet told him that he was going to die. He prayed and he cried and he turned his face to the wall and he says, oh, that can't happen. I have done so much good. I've been good. And I prayed, oh, Father, have mercy. And did God help hear his prayer? Yes, he did. Yes, God heard his prayer and gave him 15 more years. Oh, what a blessing. Now, as we continue, Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Amon. Amon was the father of Josiah, and Josiah was the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the exile in Babylon. Remember when they went, they were exiled, they were taken away to Babylon, and they went on to Babylon. Look at the, I mean, we're talking about 400 years, all right? And all of these things are happening, and it's continuing, and it's going on. 400 years are not 400 days now. You know that. We are, we are in the year 2013. All right? You remember if you were born five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago, it seems like such a long, long time. But is it? No, it's not really. Not when you're looking at it from 400 years perspective. Look way down the road. 400 years. And here we have the genealogy of Jesus, the, the, the breaking down of his family and who they were and what they did, because it's written. It is written. Oh, I love that. It is so cool. Now, after the exile in Babylon, do you remember someone that went into Babylon? Well, he's not in this, this um, genealogy, but just, just to refresh your memory, do you remember... Daniel? Yes. Remember Daniel? Remember Jeremiah? These are people who went into the exile in Babylon. So we're not talking about a fantasy here. We're talking about things that really happened. Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel. And Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel was the father of Abiud. And Abiud was the father of Eliakim. And Eliakim was the father of Azor. After Azor, he was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achim. And Achim was the father of Eliud. And Eliud was the father of Eliezer. Eliezer was the father of Mathan. Mathan was the father of Jacob. Now here we get in somewhere. Who is Jacob, you say? Jacob was the father of Joseph. Well, wow. And who is Joseph? Joseph was the husband of Mary. Remember now? Coming up? Yes. We're almost there. And Mary was the mother of Jesus. Jesus is called Christ. He is the anointed one, the savior that came into the world to save us from our sins. Oh, 
Is that exciting or what? Now, if we were to go over to Luke's gospel, we would find that the genealogy does not stay here. It goes all the way to Adam. And at the end, in St. Luke's gospel, let me see if I can find it. It says, and Adam was the son of God. I tell you, oh, it's, you know, for me, it's very exciting. I trust that it is exciting for you. I want you to just get into God's word and just read what God says about who he is. How he came into the world, it may seem like a fairy tale to you, but it's for real. It is very, very real. Oh, man with their puny brain cannot understand this. The Holy Ghost has to let you understand it. And you have to believe it. Oh, you cannot even get a hold of this unless you believe. The Word of God says that it is impossible to please God if you have no faith. So you have to have faith in order to accept God's word, believe it, and know that it is so, for it is so. Jesus Christ is God. He is Lord of all. He came into the world. Listen, he made this whole universe. He can afford to come into this universe however he chose. And he chose to come into this universe, this world that we live in, through a virgin to a woman who had no connection with the man she was espoused to marry so that Jesus can be the sinless man. See, if he was the son of Joseph, he could not redeem us. Why? Because he would have been a sinner. He would have been part of Adam's progenitors. He would, have, he would have come from Adam in the sense of Adam's blood, but he had no blood of humanity. He had the blood of God, and that's why that blood could have been shed for us on Calvary to wipe away the sin of disobedience. Oh, what a beautiful picture this is. What a lovely word of God. I tell you, we're going to read more about God's word through Matthew in the beginning of the Gospels of the New Testament. But isn't it exciting? Isn't it fantastic? It is so wonderful to know, to know that God didn't just happen, that it was a plan, that it came down from God, from heaven. When God set this world up, when he created it, he wanted a people that would not just fall at his feet, but would know that they love him, they've accepted him. I want God. No, I'm going to choose God. Oh, so there are different, different things and different God, God, G, small G, God, because you can make a God out of anything, anything that you worship, anything that you think is better than God Almighty, that's your God, and you chose that. And if you choose that, then you will go the way that goes. But if you choose God Almighty's way of salvation, which is in Jesus Christ, you will, you will have eternal life with him. That's the choice. That's the reason for the choice. That if you accept Christ Jesus as your savior, you are going to live with him forever, forever. And if you don't, you're going to burn in hell forever, forever. For that's the choice you make. That's your choice. The word of God says it. I believe it. I believe God's word because when I accepted Jesus Christ by faith, he came into my life. He sent the Holy Ghost, the power into me so that I may be able to live for him. Oh, it's such a joy. It's such an expression of gratitude that I sit here speaking his word to you, looking unto him to open your heart so that he will come into your life and live with you. But once you open your heart and you accept Jesus Christ by faith, that's all you have to do. Say, Lord, I, I believe this. 
I, I, I'm getting it. I, I believe it. I'm going to, yes, I, I, I got it. I got it. Open my heart. Let me just, oh, yeah, because you see, the enemy will fight you. The, this other thing that's put itself up calling himself God, Satan, the devil, he is your enemy and he's going to fight you. He's going to say, oh, don't listen to her. Oh, that's foolishness. Look, oh, there they go again with that Jesus, Jesus thing. Oh, don't you listen. Don't you take it on. That's not so. He's a liar. He comes to steal, to take you away into hell with him. And believe me, there is no turning back. Our own pastor, Randolph Ferdinand says, he says, once you get into hell, which is so true, I love what he says. He says, you can buy a pair of shoes if it's too small or big, you turn it back. You can get married and get a divorce and so on. But once you go to hell, you are never, ever, 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 never coming back. There is no back door in hell. You cannot escape. You have to choose now whom you are going to live with forever. Today, right now, you have to choose Jesus Christ. You see, he's not a fiction of the imagination. He came through. Oh, what a joyous thought this is. What a book of redemption this is. What a love and kind God this is to give us the genealogy. He says, I don't want you to just have faith by without any without any proof. This is the proof. These are the proof. The word of God is the proof that you can stand on it, make that decision, and call on the name of Jesus. Oh, you would be so excited. You would be as listen, you'd be as excited as I get every time, every minute I read God's word. Every time his love gets poured into my soul, listen, you're going to be so excited. Trust God. Boys and girls, don't let anyone steer you away from the power and love of God's grace. Hold on to him. He's everlasting on to everlasting. I'm going to let you sing a song just for him. Here it is. the time has come ah it's gone it's gone it's gone i have to leave you i will oh but i'm not leaving you because i want to or must i'm leaving you because the time has come i trust that you will come back and be with us on next sunday come back and be with us right here on 92.9 fm choice radio so that you can enjoy and glory in god and lift him up and love him with praises and songs and with the truth. God bless you. Keep it locked right here as we listen to our own Pastor Ferdinand coming in with the word, the word that made flesh, the word that will make you alive and give you all the power and all the love that you need. God bless you as you go. In Jesus' name. Have a good week. Bye bye. We close. We look to the heavens and it started to slow down. The fatherless, be with your sons and daughters this Christmas. You and him, we choose to give. Christmas. Love, and joy, and peace to one of His. Father, let us not forget the children who are all alone this Christmas. You and him, we choose to give. This Christmas. You and him, we choose to give. Imagine that God, our Father, accepts as pure. Faultless is this to look after orphans.
past me staring at the sky I said I do and saw a sparkle in his eye Nine years old, but Johnny was an old soul Gonna spend his next Christmas in a real home